It's arrived, the new JXD Retro Mini Arcade. I saw this one on Wicked Gamer's channel and I've just received it. Um, I was keen to check it out because apparently it's got the same specs as the iWo. So what do we get? Um, I ordered a special pack with this one that got a 32 gig memory card, so, and a HDMI cable. Oh, what's this? Uh, it's a little, um, looks like a little LCD game they threw in for free. Um, blocks. I think it's a Tetris, a little simple Tetris game. So that's pretty cool. And it's pink. Oh. And um, this package, I believe, came with two joysticks. So I'm guessing they're in here. It's a USB. Here they are. Uh, two same joysticks you get with the Retro Mini Arcade. So I've got a few of those now. Um, and the actual unit, here it is. A few people saying it looks like a toy, I don't mind that. I think it kind of has that Neo Geo look about it. It's pretty cool. I like the look of this, yeah. So, very keen to check it out. So this looks just like the iWo's menu system, I guess, or launch screen. And yep, and the menu's identical as well. I had seen this on Wicked Gamer's channel. Um, so I'll have to check out a couple of games. Maybe start with uh, maybe Final Fight. Okay, here we go. Um, it's worth noting that the screen on the right, the JXD, is a lower resolution screen. It's not just a smaller screen, but it has less pixels. Uh, it's 480 by 272. So this will be interesting. Okay, I can see a better color definition on the right. So it's got more defined colors, whereas the Iowa is kind of a bluey washed out tone. Um, the JXD definitely looks better. Um, that being said, it's not an IPS screen. Um, all the brochures for it say this is an IPS screen, but I can tell you now this isn't an IPS screen. This is a TFT. You can tell by the viewing angles changing the colors, they get sort of washed out when you look at it from above or beside it. It's exactly the same technology as the screen on the left in the iWo. Hang on, see if I can play these two things at the same time. This is going to be pretty bad. Okay, so... Let's have a look. The colours are better on the JXD. Um, Performance-wise, they seem pretty much identical. The sound is identical. Um, a little bit more muffled on the JXD, but still quite decent. Um, but yeah, game's running the same speed. So... Yeah, so if I had to pick one right now, of first impressions, um, I probably prefer the JXD. I've always liked smaller systems, and the colours are better on the screen as well, so... Uh, so far, so good on this one. Thought I'd check out a PlayStation game. Um, it came preloaded with Tekken 3, so I had that on both, so let's check that one out. I would expect the performance of these to be pretty much identical. Um, they're essentially the same machine from what I understand, and hardware-wise, and I guess the only thing different would be the screen resolution. Maybe the one on the right, the JXD, would have a little bit less image data to push through, but other than that, these things look like they're identical. They run the same games. They're running them pretty similar. I mean, this is a video, but... Let's check it out. How do you skip it? Here we go. Okay. Okay, I can see, again, the brighter colors on the right. You can see maybe in the uh, girl's shirt there. It's a bit brighter orange. And, uh, it's loaded up different levels, so it's going to be a bit hard to do a comparison. But you can see they're both running well. Um, I guess it's not a fair comparison, but the one on the right, the JXD, feels a bit more defined again, like the contrast of the colours is a bit better. Um, a warmer colour maybe, a redder 
orangey red a tone to the whole screen, whereas the eyewire again is a blue tint, if you like. But overall, yep, this is on par with each other. Let's try removing the plastic. Um, this always makes me nervous. I actually wrecked a screen once doing this. Oh, it's tough. Okay, that worked. So let's try another comparison game, I think. We'll try Wonder Boy. I like that game for comparison, even though I'd be surprised if it didn't run as well as the ILO, considering they're the same hardware. So uh, let me find it. There it is. But um, yeah, always a good one to check out because it's so fast and needs good frame rates as you would have seen in previous videos. Okay. Yep, so this is running well. It's running the same as the iWay, I would say. Uh, the screen's a bit brighter again. The colors are better, but all in all, this is the same performance as the iWay. This joystick's pretty good too, actually. Um, it's quite responsive and feels quite springy and firm. Um, it's not all sloppy like the iWay. Um, I know Wicked Gamers was getting stuck, but this one isn't doing it. It's feeling quite good, and these buttons are great too, actually. They're really firm, and they feel really well made. So I guess that's a bonus for the controls. Um, they're good. Good enough. Probably better than any of the other mini game consoles I've played. Um, better than the Retro Mini Arcade. Definitely better than the, GX, uh, the G1000. So that's good. Let's zoom in a bit. Um, I like this resolution, uh, even though it's a lower res, it feels more native to the, the games. A lot of these big screens stretch the pixels and they look quite ugly and blurry, whereas this looks more natural, um, and the fact it's a smaller screen it means they're not as blocky. So let's try my favourite game on the PS, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, PS1 that is, sorry. I'm really stoked to be able to play this on the iWo. Um, I've been playing it a fair bit actually. Used to love this game when it came out. Um, big fan of skate games and I think this is probably the best of the entire Tony Hawk series, so... Keen to see how it is in this thing. There it is, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. I'll load up a save game because I have one on this wrong card. Here we go. Chad Muska at the school. Backpack edition. There we go. Still got it. Can't count the number of hours spent on this game as when I was younger. So let's just hit the Gons rail up a bit. Made famous by legendary skater Mark Gonzalez. This is great. I think, I don't think I'd seen anyone review this before. So I'll put this in the comments to make sure people find it if they're searching for a way to play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. This is a pretty good option if you go out and buy one of these systems. Yeah. So, ah, damn it. Um, yeah, this is a really good way to play it. Let's check out another PlayStation game, Mortal Kombat Trilogy. Now, there's two versions of this game floating around. One of them runs brilliantly with full frames, and the other one's a bit jittery and has problems with sound and music. The way to tell is if you see this animated Williams logo, you've got the good one. The other one just has a static image at the start. That's the image there. So avoid that one and go for this one because the performance is surprisingly different. This is a lot better on the same machine. Now to get the music going on this, um, thanks to Johnny Lou for the tip, you need to make sure you've got the, the ROM image with the Q file and you've got to put a BIOS file in the same folder. Well, that's what worked for me anyway. So I've been able to get all these games music working by doing that. Let's check out Liu Kang. Choose your destiny, excellent. 
So even this shot here where you see it scrolling down, it's actually quite smooth on the, I guess the pirated version or the unofficial version, it's quite slow, the frame rate's quite choppy. I guess this is a test for the joystick to see if I can get it to be, play a fighting game. A lot of these wiggle sticks, um, as, as Wicked Gamer calls them, are pretty bad at fighting games. Um, So any Mortal Kombat fans out there, this is probably your best bet for this machine. Um, as far as I know, the arcade doesn't run Mortal Kombat 2, the, um, the arcade emulation. Hey, cut that. But uh, this one's got all the characters from 1, 2 and 3, and some extra stuff. Down, forward, back, back, high kick. Ugh. That's a tough fatality. Let's try something else. About uh, Ridge Racer. This is, I think this was a launch title on PS1. Um, I like the arcade game. I wasn't a huge fan of it on PlayStation, but it's it's not a bad version of it. I just don't get the same feeling playing with the games controller we had from sitting in the car in the arcade. And yeah, the little playable loading screen, which I'm terrible at. Red Racer! So again, this has music now because I put the BIOS file in that folder. And if you want to create your own screenshots, just name them the same as the image file and put them in the same folder or even the same name as a folder and you can see it at the folder level. I've been doing that a bit. If you're wondering where those screenshots came from. Yeah, I don't, I don't claim to be good at this, so... It's running pretty well. It's as good as I remember it being on, on the real PlayStation, which is great. I haven't been able to get it to drift. I seem to remember in the arcade drifting around all these sharp corners. But I don't know how to do it on the PlayStation. If anyone knows, feel free to leave me a comment. Let's try some Super Nintendo or Super Famicom. Uh, this is um, Donkey Kong Country. Hmm. It looks a lot nicer on this small screen, I've got to say. When you see it on the iWo, it's really obvious the artifacts of the pixel blurring and it just looks really stretched. This looks like the native resolution or very close to the native res that the game would have been output to like a cathode ray tube TV back in the day. Um, okay, yeah. This looks a lot nicer. Um, you do have to squint a bit with this small 4.3 inch screen, but I prefer it. I've always liked the little mini systems, so this could be my new favorite machine, I think. So if you're a fan of uh, Super Famicom games or Super Nintendo games, as we call them in Australia, um, this is definitely a good machine to get. You could play um, any of the games, I guess, um, at a pretty decent frame rate. And you've also got the option for two controllers, so you can play multiplayer if you use one of the extra controllers that came with the system. So that's a good option. Right, let's try something else. Okay, probably my favorite platformer of all time. It's a big call. If you don't count Wonder Boy as a platformer, I guess it is, but this one, I just remember sitting and playing this thing from beginning to end and really enjoying it. Um, it just changes. There's so much constant change in this game. And even in some points, it's, it's, it's almost like 3D where you're running around a spiral tree. Um, it's, yeah, it's a really good platformer. And don't be put off by the Mickey Mouse theme. It's called Mickey Mania, if it wasn't already obvious. Um, I would definitely recommend it if you haven't ever seen it before. Give it a go. It's running beautifully on this, by the way. Frame rate's perfect. Sounds really good too. Oh, this is hard. 
loud. Come on. Got it. Okay. It wouldn't be a test without trying Double Dragon. Uh, if you've seen my previous video, you'd know that I'm a huge fan of this game as well. Um, although I liked seeing it with brighter colours on the screen, so that's good. You can notice it. Um, I would say this screen is very comparable to the Rage B screen as far as colours go. Um, if anyone's, there's been a few comments about the Rage B. Um, I actually destroyed the machine. Um, I was trying swapping monitors around with the IWO. And when I went to reconnect it to the Rage B, um, I had some problem with some smoking capacitors on the board. I don't know what happened. Um, the monitor's fine, but the system, I didn't trust it, especially not with the lithium battery in there. So I shall not be trying that again, and I probably won't buy the Rage B again. I wasn't really happy with its performance. But if anyone else gets one, I'd love to see your opinion of it and review. Um, I think I'll stick with the IWO generation, I guess you'd say. Um, but this machine's great. Again, the, the pixel art is just so much nicer to look at when you're on a low-res screen. But it's not like, um, I guess, the Retro Mini Arcade with its original firmware. It had like a pixel nearest neighbor algorithm or something going on where the pixels were fatter and skinnier in different parts of the screen. This has a nice, almost smooth, anti-aliased look to it. So let's check out Street Fighter 3 on this thing. I'm pretty sure, again, it's going to run well, because I've seen it running on the iWo. Um, yeah. Who's this guy? I've never chosen him before. Blue man with a hat. Wow, this guy's tall. Couldn't do kick. <laughs> He's got a good stomp on him. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Anyway, it's running really well. Um, no surprise there. Full frames. Sounds good. I reckon you're going to be hard pressed to try and trip this machine over. I mean, it probably will have the same issues with N64 emulation as the iWo G1000. So um, I was never, a, I didn't own an N64. I played a bit of GoldenEye, but I wasn't really a, a, a fan of it because I didn't have one. So I don't really miss that. But I'm sorry for those who are diehard Nintendo 64 fans. It doesn't seem to be a solution for you guys yet. Um, but this thing's running everything else really well. I thought I'd compare it to the original Retro Mini Arcade. Um, the Retro Mini on the right has a true IPS screen, um, which means you can see it from different viewing angles, um, it's more vibrant. But unfortunately, it also has this very sharp, jagged, pixelated look to it because they're using a different pixel scaling algorithm, I, I suspect. If you have a look, I'll zoom in. You can see it's just really jagged, um, and the other one has got a smoother look, which is more true to the arcade because of the old CRT screens. Let's compare a Super Nintendo game, Rock and Roll Racing. Uh, this is playing to it once again. Uh, this is a lot harder than it looks, but um, you get an idea of the performance. I'd say the JXD has a better frame rate. Um, but not by a lot. They're both pretty playable. Um, and I guess you've got that pixelated look on the right, but better contrast of the IPS screen. Something I wanted to also show you guys, because it's frustrating me, um, something happened with my original firmware iWo on the left. You can see how they don't show the screenshots there. That's the difference between the two firmwares. Um, it started not filling the screen, and I've always wanted that feature, but I don't know how it did it. And I'd love anyone out there to help us figure out how that can be done. It can be done, but I don't know how it got stuck in that mode. So instead of um, 
filling the screen width wise on a portrait game it maintains its portrait aspect uh, which is pretty cool um, I'll, I prefer that because I don't like the games looking really wide and stretched so it's a bit of a mystery um, as you can see on the left you've got the black sidebars and it's the game in the correct aspect it doesn't affect games like Street Fighter, they're using the same aspect ratios on both screens, but um, yeah, I don't know how. So I, I think I read a few comments from people saying that after a few weeks, theirs did the same thing. Um, so it's really bizarre. The only thing I can say is I was testing PlayStation games around the time it happened. I'll try Wonder Boy just as a quick demo to show the, again, the, um, the natural resolution, I guess you'd say on the original firmware iWay. Now I didn't get it like this. The original iWay was stretched just like the new version, um, but over time it suddenly switched into the native mode, I guess you'd say, which is really cool. So let's figure out how it happens. So all three of these machines are pretty good. Um, the JXD has the best joystick, the Retro Mini probably the best screen, although I like the look of the JXD better because it's smoother, and the JXD and the iWay have the best performance. So the winner is the JXD, I just like the brighter colors on this compared to the IWO. I do have a preference for smaller machines. Um, I like the native resolution on this thing. I just think the graphics look more natural at a lower res than being stretched and blurry on a bigger screen. Um, I like the controls on this better than both machines. It's just a great games console. Um, I'm really happy with it. Um, but you wouldn't go wrong with the, either of the other two, but this would definitely be my preference and I'm looking forward to seeing where this thing goes with custom firmware. So thanks for watching. Um, click the subscribe button if you want to hear more of these kinds of reviews. I'm also looking at modding a few of these machines, so uh, stay tuned.